Hi everyone, um, my name is Junwei. I would like to first acknowledge my co-author Dr. Wan uh, Reis Montes from ASC and Professor Po Yam from University of Toronto. The title of this presentation is Automated Microseismic Events Location Using Finite Difference Travel Time Calculation and Enhanced Waveform Stacking. So in this work we combine two advancements. One is an efficient travel time calculator and the other one is the enhanced waveform stacking and we come up with a new algorithm to locate microseismic events automatically. Here by saying automated we mean there's no face picking either by a person or by a computer. So why no, fa no face picking? This work is motivated by a common observation that manual picking can only be fun and accurate when the data quality is sweet and data amount is manageable. However, in the field, a huge amount of data can be dumped into your hard drive in seconds or even uh, in minutes or even seconds with a mixed signal to noise ratio. And in that case, face picking is time consuming and uh, error prone. So the idea here is to replace the face picking by grid search. There are many variant of location algorithm used uh, based on grid search. For example, the source scanning algorithm published in 2004. The basic idea of grid search is first define a, a search volume. It's a region where micro seismicity uh, seism likely occur. And then you calculate the travel time table for each pair of the grid and the receiver and the grid now is the source. And then you match the travel time with the waveform. The grid point that best matches the waveform are considered the, uh, the, the, the location of the micro seismic events. And that's how it works. In theory, in practice, there are a few challenges. The first challenge comes from the travel time calculation. As the model gets more and more complicated, the ray tracing can be very time consuming and time, sometimes some problematic, and I'll show you later. The other challenge is the non uniqueness. Due to the limited aperture, for example, in a borehole case, uh, there are multiple grid that can match the travel time equally well. So, it's, so, so you don't know which grid point to choose as the uh, micro seismicity location. To address the travel time issue, we propose to use a faster sweeping method. It's uh, just a finite difference based uh, econo equation solver. So each grid will get a travel time. And then if you need it, the seismic rays can be traced through the gradient of the travel time field so that the incident angle, the emergence angle, the traveling distance, and all that can be calculated from the rays. Uh, to reduce the space, spatial uncertainty, we propose to include polarization in the waveform stacking to penalize the differences between the calculated polarization and the expected ray vector, we can reduce the spatial uh, uncertainties. We apply this algorithm to uh, synthetic data as well as field data before we draw the conclusions. So ray tracing, conventional ray tracing is still useful, but it can be time consuming and sometimes uh, difficult to do. For example, the point source in this case is located in a smoothly varying heterogeneous environment, uh, in, uh, the model. Uh, the angle distance between the adjacent ray path at the source location is identical, but this feature is not reserved as you move away from the point source because the ray tracing is nonlinear. Then a few problems arise, for example, the multipathing. For a given pair of source and receiver, it's a non-uniqueness problem for the ray tracing because there are multiple ray paths exist. The other problem is the shadow zones. Uh, the velocity structure are like that, so the most of the rays will try to avoid a region. So it becomes a shadow. So if you have a uh, receivers in the shadow or below or uh, behind the shadow, the ray tracing is difficult. And sometimes it may not converge um, to get the ray trace. Therefore, we propose to use the faster sweeping method. It's a grid-based method. It's simply a finite difference a method to solve the econo equation directly. And this is the general expression for the econo equation. T is the travel time, X is the space location, C is the propagation speed, and omega is your modeling region, gamma is the boundary condition. If it's a point source, then the boundary condition is just a point, and the travel time at that point, at the boundary, are unknown. Taking 1D velocity as example, faster sweeping method goes like this. If the source is located at the middle, faster sweeping method starts from an arbitrary point 
and use the neighboring point to update the travel time at its current position and we start from left of course those point and its neighboring point has no new information so they stay the same till you reaches this point the travel time is updated by the point source and those points are updated one by one because the energy is propagating on that way and then we sweep backward and those points are get updated so in a 1D case as you can see we take two sweeps to calculate the travel time in a 2D case like this we take four sweeps and in a 3D it requires eight sweeps and each sweeping is independent on each other so if you have multiple cores you can perform the sweepings uh, simultaneously and you can achieve a very good speed up and here is just an example um, the travel time field calculated using the fast sweeping method the model is very complicated it's adapted from the mining case so you can imagine that the strong discontinuity between high velocity and low velocity and there are regions that velocity is significantly low and plus there is um, a zero velocity region this becomes the barrier so the ISO surface, well if you use one CPU core it takes less than uh, 5 seconds for 10,000 grid point velocity model like this. The ISO surface of the travel time fields just shows you the wave is propagating away from the point source and the waves are concentrated here because it's a low velocity. So the propagation is significantly slow and if you can, if you, once you get the travel time you can calculate the gradient of the travel time and then the rays can be traced from the arbitrary point towards the source and of course all the rays will end up at the source because that's the energy come from uh, here is just a 3D a small video clip shows you a 3D flavor of the model you can see the model has very heterogeneous and has a very strong uh, velocity contrast 4 kilometers per second to 3 kilometers per second that's very low velocity so now we plot the ISO surface of the travel time field it just shows you the wave is propagating away from the point source it's not sphere at all because the, the velocity is heterogeneous and then the rays can be traced from you know a given reserve uh, receiver point and follow the gradient and again because if it's a heterogeneous model the rays are not straight they're bended so we have the travel time field. The next step is to calculate the uh, is to stack the waveform following the travel time table. Um, the summation along the arrival time equals to the amplitude, and we have a small window to calculate the semblance. Semblance is a measure of the coherence across the traces. So if your travel time uh, matches the waveform, you have a high semblance. Otherwise, semblance is is low. And here we use the semblance to weight the amplitude so we get the semblance in Ham's the stacking and that's the final image we got uh, this is just an example here uh, the equation I used for semblance is shown here now if we have three component then the polarization can be calculated then the differences between the polarization and the ray vector can be can be used to further enhance the uh, the stacked image to reduce the space uncertainty and I'll pull up the details here so we all know the polarization the P wave is polarized along the ray path and the shear wave is polarized on the plane perpendicular to the ray path uh, given a trial source location we will know the expected arrival time and then we pick a small time window around the expected arrival time from the three components along north, east and vertical downward and then we can calculate the covariance matrix using this equation then the maximum no, uh, the eigenvector associated with the maximum eigenvalues is considered as the ray path, the, rec the, 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 the vector of the ray path. On the other hand, given a pair of source in the receiver, the seismic rays can be traced following the gradient of the travel time field. So now we have two vectors. In a grid search, we are not only comparing the travel time, we are also comparing the polarization and the ray vectors. So you can imagine that among all the points that matches the travel time equally well, those points that doesn't match the uh, uh, the polarization it will be excluded. So the spatial uncertainty is uh, is reduced. And this algorithm, this is a two-step algorithm. Uh, first step, calculate the travel time. Second step, do the stacking. This algorithm can be applied to both the streaming data as well as trigger data. All we need to do is to define two time window, a signal window, and a scan window. 
the signal window is just to take a byte out of the uh, a huge amount of data so that we can enjoy data crunching without running out of memory and then we have a scan window scan through within the signal window from left to the right uh, for all child source location and origin time and after that we just continue take another byte it has no makes no difference to our algorithm the only difference is, is the trigger data has maybe has less amount of data and that the quality in general is higher than the streaming data because you pre-filtered some noise so now let's try the algorithm on a numerical surveys two numerical surveys we have designed uh, one is the surface monitoring project uh, the surface geoforms covers four by four kilometers areas on the surface and the borehole monitoring project we have four boreholes and focusing a much smaller region both project both numerical surveys are modified from real project and the velocity is modified uh, created from uh, the well locks for the surface area uh, monitoring the point source is located about three kilometers below the surface with a um, uh, mixing shear and tensile mechanisms. The primary frequency is at 10 Hz. And for the uh, no, and on the surface there are 14 lines of receiver. Each line have 79 geophones. And that recorded the full waveform from the point source. For the borehole monitoring, although we designed initially for boreholes, each borehole has 21 three component geoform. In the following test, we're going to only use the waveform from a single borehole just to demonstrate how the spatial uncertainty is reduced. Again, the point source is located in the middle with mixed the shear and the tensile component and mechanism. The primary frequency in the borehole case is 150 Hz. Uh, the red box it just marks the uh, search volume for the surface monitoring uh, project is one kilometers with 30 meter grid interval so it gives you about 19,000 uh, grid points to search and for the model we have 40 meter by 40 meter by 80 meter with one meter grid interval that gives us 128 grid points to search and of course the computation load will increase with increasing resolution so the full waveform seismic equation is solved numerically using the spectral finite element method developed by this group started as early as 1990s as you can see that this is the horizontal component of the displacement on the surface area the p wave and the shear wave can be observed clearly and we can also observe the p2s and s to p converted energy it's very good data because there's no noise and we can also notice the strong shear wave amplitude in general is higher than the P wave indicating there is a strong shear wave component in the source mechanism uh, then the random noise was added on top of the waveform uh, the level of the noise is slightly higher than the shear wave so as a result there's no phase you can observe after adding the noise. Then we applied the algorithm on the horizontal component of the uh, of the waveform from the surface array. The first row gives you a 3D this, uh, a flavor of the uh, surface so uh, surface geoform and the uh, search volume. Uh, this row is just a closer look at the final image, the stacked image. We stack the P wave following. Uh, we stack the waveform following the P wave travel time with noise and without noise, and we also stack the waveform following the shear wave travel time. As expected, without noise, the stacking of the P wave enhances the coherent noise, a uh, coherent uh, the signal, and the maximum, uh, the global maximum and the global minimum here both predict the uh, true source location within half of the wavelengths and the global maximum and minimum corresponding to the peak and trough of the wavelet, source wavelet. So it depends on how you define the zero time of the source. Uh, it can be the maximum, it can be the minimum. And we can also take the average of this to um, get to the middle point. In this case, coincidentally, the middle point is closer to the, uh, the true source location. With noise, the stacking failed to locate the true source location because we know the stacking can only enhance the coherent signal uh, by square root of the m times if m is the total number of trace. And because of the high level of noise, after the stacking, the P wave coherent energy is not enhanced enough 
to locate the true source. And thanks to the high amplitude of the shear wave, the stacking actually enhanced the shear wave energy and it located the true source location very well. We apply the same algorithm on the uh, single borehole waveform from one borehole, say uh, borehole A, at this location. And um, from the plan wave, you can see that degrees, points along the curve actually matches the travel time equally well. But because of the polarization enhancement, only those points that matches the polarization will be enhanced or get a higher weight than those the rest of the points. As you can see, the global maximum and global minimum still predict the true source location in half of the wavelength distance. Uh, and then we apply the algorithm to the field data. This is a one stage of the hydraulic fracturing project. Uh, the red box marks the operating stage, actually is the location of perforation shot. Um, two are monitoring boreholes, each with 10 geofoams. Three component geofoams are located on both sides of the uh, treatment well. The velocity model are created based on the well locks and then later calibrated uh, by the perforation shot. You can see the layers are tilting along one direction. Uh, again, X pointing to north, Y pointing to east, and Z is pointing downward in this case. Um, we stack the waveform from both boreholes simultaneously following the shear wave travel timetable because we observe a stronger shear wave energy in, uh, in the data. And we located about 45 events comparing to a single borehole treated separately. Uh, 30 or uh, 21 we got much more events and also the uh, the time is plotted as uh, the origin time is plotted as uh, in color so you can see um, the, the fractures actually is growing on that direction again compare with the conventional processing 21 events we have 45 events so the uh, the, uh, the, the the fractures develop along this northwest direction this actually is the northwest direction is better statistically defined comparing to the conventional processing and if we plot um, one of the arrivals on top of the waveform you can see uh, they matches it's very easy to verify it matches the uh, the travel time, or matches the waveform very well so we can draw the conclusions here we develop a new automatic algorithm uh, based on faster sweeping method and enhance the stacking this algorithm can be applied to both streaming data and trigger data it makes no difference. We demonstrate its efficiency and robustness on synthetic data and one of the tests on field data is successful. And finally I'll leave you the picture uh, with seismic travel times and seismic rays traced through these two words. Thank you very much for your attention.